In this video, I want to give you a breakdown of all the daily tools that I use as a data scientist. As there are quite a few, I'm going to break them down into the following categories. Programming, AI, management and productivity, and communication. Let's get into it. A large part of being a data scientist is being able to program, particularly in Python. So it's really important that you have a really good development setup on your local machine. My main tool is PyCharm, which is my go-to IDE. I probably don't use it for its full capacity, but I like it and I enjoy using it. Instead of regular terminal, I use item2 just because it's more customizable and has a lot more features. Needless to say, version control is really important nowadays. And the gold standard tool for this is Git and GitHub. I use the Git command line instead of the Git desktop app only because I find it easy to use and also I think it looks a lot cooler. Unfortunately, Macs don't ship with a really nice native package manager that like they do for Linux machines with apt. This is why I install Homebrew, which is basically, or it is dubbed as the missing package manager for Mac OS. And for me, Anaconda is just way too clunky. So I use PyEnv and Poetry as my default environment and package manager. As you can see, my setup is pretty minimal because having too many tools will just confuse my little brain. AI is here to stay, so we should get used to working with it. I use AI pretty much on a daily basis and it really has improved my productivity and output. However, you don't need to overcomplicate it and have dozens of AI tools. Only a few will be sufficient to meet most of your cases. Naturally, the best tool on the market is ChatGPT, which is probably the one most people use. I think the $20 subscription for the Plus version is an absolute bargain because, like I said, I use it every single day and it pretty much helps me in all forms of life and work. And the final AI tool I use is GitHub Copilot, which is an AI coding tool that lives inside your IDE. I often find sometimes it's better than ChatGPT because it has more kind of awareness around your project and more context behind what you're trying to do. So it often gives kind of better suggestions about like functions, doc strings, tests, etc. because it has that more knowledge about the problem you're trying to do. I would say it improves my coding speed by about five to 10%, but it really does vary per project. Of course, there are so many more AI tools out there, but like I said in the beginning, I think less is more and being really proficient in a few tools is often a lot better than just trying out every single new tool under the sun. Coding and doing analysis is just one part of being a professional data scientist. You must be able to effectively collaborate with your team and ensure that you're always on top of all your projects. Tools that help me in this department are Notion. So I'm sure most of you have heard of Notion, but Notion is like this note taking app, but it's a lot more extensive. So I use Notion to track my projects, uh, basically take notes of anything I may need, code snippets, useful functions, etc. I treat Notion basically like my own personal wiki and it stores anything that I may need in the future. I also use Miro, which is basically a digital whiteboard, but it's really clean and smooth and I find it very helpful when trying to explain things through diagrams or scoping work with my colleagues. Having somewhere to store your files is pretty much a necessity nowadays and for this I use Google Drive. But to be honest, you can use any other software out there like Outlook or Microsoft. It just comes down to personal preference. In a similar vein, you're also going to need some sort of digital calendar. For this, I use Google Calendar, mainly because I already use Drive and so it makes sense that I use a Google ecosystem. But again, it doesn't really matter. Just pick a product you like and just start working with it. Jira is another tool that I used, which is really prominent within the tech industry. And it's basically a project management software where if you're working in Agile or Kanban, it's really suitable for that. And finally, I use Rectangle, which easily allows me to reshape and resize my windows on my Mac. It's all good building some sort of fancy machine learning model that generates a million in revenue for the business. But if you don't tell anyone about it, how would they ever know? Communication is an essential and crucial skill for data scientists to master and having the right tools can really improve your communication abilities. My main tool of communication is Slack. Slack is like the default messaging communication system for tech companies. It integrates really well with other products like Jira, Google, Miro, and so this is why it's quite preferable for tech companies. I personally really like it. I prefer it to Microsoft Teams, and in general, I think the Slack ecosystem is just a lot better. I also use LaTeX a lot when communicating any form of mathematics. So for my blog, for these videos, and even in my work, I would use LaTeX quite a lot. 
to construct and make equations to explain my thought process. Latex by far the best tool for this in my opinion because I mean just try and use the equation editor in Google Docs. It's really hard to get it working and LaTeX is just so much better and so much quicker. I use Gmail as my default email provider. Again, only because I use the whole Google ecosystem, so it makes sense that Gmail is my default provider. And I'm pretty sure something like a third to half of the population also use Gmail. So you're in good hands. And finally, I use Google Meets as my default web conferencing software. Again, only because I use Google Suite for everything, it's convenient for me to use. If you enjoyed this video, and you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Dishna Data. I send it every Monday morning, and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out.